In this video, we will discuss another set of the 29th Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken questions and of course, their corresponding answers under the category Kaigo no Kihon. The topics of Kaigo no Kihon, or in English, Fundamentals of Care, include but not limited to ethical and safe care practices and infection control. Needless to say, a wide range of knowledge may be required of us to answer the questions under Kaigo no Kihon. So, without further ado, let's begin. Welcome back to Nico Venture. In this question, we are asked to select the statement that correctly describes Koreisha Gyakutai Chosa Kekka or the result of a survey about elder abuse. According to this note, this survey was done way back in 2014 and focuses on the people caring for the elderly and the prevention of elder abuse. Since 2014 is almost a decade ago, I will also provide the latest survey and of course the latest result in this video. So. Take note. So, Koreisha Gyakutai is just elder abuse. It's a single or repeated action or lack of any action at all that causes harm or distress to an older person. In the context of caregiving, two types of people causes abuse to the elderly. First is the Yogosha, or those people that are currently taking care of the elderly but are not working in a caregiving facility, which includes family members, old family members, and relatives and other people living under the same roof with the elderly. Second is the Yo Kaigo Shisetsu Jujisha, or the staff of a caregiving facility. And when I say the staff of a caregiving facility, it includes the care workers, the care managers, the receptionists, the drivers, basically everyone working in a caregiving facility. Additionally, there are five types of Koreisha Gyakutai. The Shintai Teki Gyakutai, the Shinri Teki Gyakutai, the Keizai Teki Gyakutai, the Sei Teki Gyakutai, and the Kaigo Sewa no Hochi Honin. Choice number five claims that the result of the survey recognizes Yurio Rojin Homu as the most common type of caregiving facility with the most number of cases of elder abuse done by its staff. Yurio Rojin Homu is a type of caregiving facility here in Japan. For the sake of this video, you only have to know three things about this facility. One, Yurio Rojin Homu is a privately owned caregiving facility. Two, Yurio Rojin Homu is expensive. Three, Yurio Rojin Homu accepts all kinds of elderly from the ambulatory or jeritsu to the bedridden people with Yo Kaigo Do Go. So, going back. As of the 2014 survey result, the most common caregiving facility here in Japan with the most number of cases of elder abuse, Okoreisha Gyakutai, done by its staff, is the Tokubetsu Yogo Rojin Homu. In the latest version of the survey done in 2021, the result is still the same. Choice number four claims that the family and relatives of the elderly are the most common sources of reports about Koreisha Gyakutai done by the caregiving staff. According to this 2014 survey result, it's neither the family nor the relatives who often reports cases of Koreisha Gyakutai done by the caregiving staff, but it's the other caregiving staff. Which makes sense if you think about it. The family and relatives of the elderly seldom visit the caregiving facility. As such, the chances of them seeing someone doing Koreisha Gyakutai and reporting it is slim. On the other hand, a Koreisha Gyakutai done by the caregiving staff will be witnessed by other caregiving staff and will report you on the proper channels. Choice number two claims that from the perspective of the abused elderly, the most common Yogosha abuser is the husband. Unfortunately, according to the 2014 survey result, the most common Yogosha abuser or the abuser who lives under the same roof with the abused elderly is not the husband, but it is the son of the abused elderly. The same is still true in the 2021 survey. 
Choice number three claims that the most common family structure the abused elderly and the yogosha abuser has is kofufuto dokyo, which means the parents are living with their married child. According to the 2014 survey, it's not ko fufu to dokyo, but miko no ko to dokyo, or living with their unmarried child. Choice number one is the correct answer. The most common resident status of the abused elderly and their yogosha abuser is gyakutaisha to nomi dokyo, which means the abused elderly is living only with the yogosha abuser. Although this question is talking about the 2014 survey, it is very important to remember that the next exam, the exam next year or the exam the year after that, will ask you questions about the latest survey and its results. And the latest survey survey that I can find as of the making of this video is the 2021 survey. In this question, we are asked to select the best thing a care worker can do to improve an elderly seikatsu no shitsu or quality of life. Choice number one claims that a care worker should place the highest priority on maintaining and improving the elderly's nichijo seikatsu dosa or the activities of daily living. Nichijo seikatsu dosa refers to a person's daily self-care activities which include personal grooming, eating, walking, changing of clothes, etc. Although the maintenance and improvement of a person's Nichijo Seikatsu Dosa is very important, it doesn't need to have the highest priority to improve Seikatsu no Shitsu. You see, while Nichijo Seikatsu Dosa includes persons' daily self-care activities, Seikatsu no Shitsu in general is the feeling of happiness, the emotional state of satisfaction or contentment in one's life. And having a perfect activities of daily living doesn't guarantee a happy and satisfied life. Choice number two states that the care you provide is the same for all elderly. As care workers, we should understand that each elderly is different. And the one thing we can do to improve an elderly's quality of life or seikatsu no shitsu is to respect their individuality or in Japanese, kosei. Providing the same care to all elderly doesn't only ignore their individuality but also increases the likelihood of providing the wrong care. Choice number three claims that ignoring the mental or emotional aspect of the elderly is fine. Even if you're the healthiest person in this planet, being emotionally unwell will affect your seikatsu no shitsu. As professional caregivers here in Japan, we provide not only physical care but emotional support as well. Choice number four claims that in the final stage of an elderly's life, you, the caregiver, should dispose all elderly's personal belongings as soon as possible. Dude, even after death, respecting that elderly's dignity is absolutely important. The remaining belongings of that elderly will be under the care of the family or the relatives of that elderly and they will be the ones who will decide what to do with it, not you. Choice number five is the correct answer. Comprehensively looking into the needs and immediate living environment of the elderly can be used to provide care services that will greatly improve their seikatsu no shitsu. Mr. F, 80 years of age, has Parkinson's disease. Although his gait is unsteady, he can walk. He has tremors and has difficulty maintaining a sitting position for long periods of time. Based on that situation, we are asked to select the most appropriate risk management we, as caregivers, can do to Mr. F. Risk management, or in Japanese, risku managemento, is another common Japanese word used in the context of caregiving. It is a process of identifying threats that could harm the care facility, its residents, the staff, or anyone else within the caregiving facility. The main purpose of risku managemento is to identify the risks of accidents and prevent those risks from becoming full-blown accidents. Based on the situation we just read, risku managemento is important for Mr. F's case since he has an unsteady gait 
tremors and has difficulty maintaining a sitting position for long periods, the risk of falls is ever-present. Choice number 5 states that when standing up from a chair, Mr. F should have his chin forward and his body extended. Now, it is not normal for anyone to stand up like that. If you stand up like that, there's something wrong with you, my friend. Normally, when standing up from a chair, the body must be flexed or bent forward with the chin pulled back. Extending the body with the chin forward not only makes it difficult for Mr. F to stand up but also puts him at risk of losing balance and falling during the movement. Putting someone at risk of accidents is the exact opposite of risk management. Choice number 4 is to leave Mr. F alone soaking in a bathtub. When a person soaks in a bathtub, that person literally sits inside the bathtub, a large container filled with water. Remember that in the situation earlier, Mr. F has difficulty maintaining a sitting position for long periods of time. As such, the risk of Mr. F drowning inside the bathtub is always there. But since we left Mr. F alone, that risk of drowning just went up. Not exactly the definition of risk management, right? Choice number three is to serve Mr. F a cup full of tea. Remember that in the situation earlier, Mr. F has Parkinson's disease and one of the characteristics of Parkinson's disease is tremors in the hands. You know what? Let me just show you. Cup. Tea. Cup full of tea, Mr. F. Tremors. Cup full of tea. Oh shit! <laughs> Dude tea or ocha is served usually hot. Not boiling hot, but still hot to burn your tongue or skin. Serving a person with Parkinson's disease with a cup full of hot water has risk of burns. Do that and you're not preventing risks from becoming full-blown accidents, but you're causing accidents to occur. Choice number two says to have Mr. F always use a wheelchair when moving and have him restrained with a belt. We might think that making Mr. F use wheelchair always is a good idea since he has an unsteady gait and with a wheelchair, the risk of accidents is reduced. However, this choice is incorrect because of two words, ADL or Nichijo Seikatsu Dosa and Shintai Kosoku. As mentioned earlier, activities of daily living or in Japanese, Nichijo Seikatsu Dosa is an important factor to improve a person's Seikatsu no Shitsu or quality of life. And one of the activities of daily living is walking. Although he has an unsteady gait, he can still walk. And making him sit in a wheelchair always just to prevent accidents may have a negative impact in Mr. F's Seikatsu no Shitsu. To promote a good Seikatsu no Shitsu and prevent accidents from happening at the same time, Mr. F might use a walking aid such as a cane or a walker. Shintai Kosuku or physical restraint is done to restrain uh, a person but it can only be done under these three conditions. First is the set takuse, where restraining a resident is allowed if there is an extremely high possibility that the life or body of the resident or other residents is in danger. Next is the hidai taise, where restraining a resident is permitted if other than physical restraints, there is no alternative nursing care method available at that moment. Lastly is the ichijise, where restraining a resident is just temporary. Based on the situation earlier, there is no immediate threat of danger to Mr. F's life. There are also other means to allow Mr. F to walk safely without restraining him with a belt on a wheelchair. And physical restraints cannot also be done even temporarily in this case since, again, there are other means to allow him to walk safely. Choice number one is the correct answer. 
in Parkinson's disease, the risk of falling when starting to walk and while walking is high because the person's feet would suddenly become limp. Therefore, when starting to walk, guiding a person with Parkinson's to get into a rhythm would reduce the chance of their feet suddenly stopping and would prevent falls. So that's it. Those were some of the questions and of course their corresponding answers under the category Kaigo no Pihon. In the next video, we will continue on this same path under the same category. Thank you so much for your time watching this video. See you in the next one. Bye!